All right, welcome to our review video for chapter 14. Uh, in this video, I'm only going to go over some of the highlights of the chapter. I'm not going to cover every single detail. Uh, if you want to get every single detail, don't forget to look through your notes, go through your study guide. And if there's a particular topic in this chapter that you did not understand, please visit that particular video on My Big Campus or YouTube. So let's get this party started. One of the major things we talked about first is what is a karyotype? And a karyotype is basically an arrangement of your chromosomes based upon the following factors. You're going to arrange them by size. The biggest one is first. The smallest one is going to be last. Those are your 22 autosomes. And then finally, the 23rd pair is going to be your sex chromosomes. Ways that you can identify uh, which chromosome is which is obviously by size. But you can also look at the banding pattern. You can also look at the centromere location. So based upon those, you're going to be able to arrange those into a particular arrangement called the karyotype. Now, karyotypes are going to be able to do the following things. They're going to be able to tell you the gender of the individual. They're going to also going to be able to tell you any kind of genetic disorders that are based upon either number of chromosomes or part of a chromosome is missing. So you see here in this picture, over here on the left, we have a metaphase spread. This would be the photograph of the chromosomes. And then over on the right, this is the arrangements of those chromosomes into the karyotype. And as you can see here, this karyotype is uh, 46XY, which means it's a normal male. All right, on this slide, we've got a couple of different karyotypes. And what we've got over here in the upper left-hand one is a karyotype where we've had the wrong number of chromosomes. So if you look right here, there's only one sex chromosome. So this individual, if we're going to follow our notation rules down here, this individual has 45 chromosomes. It has only one X chromosome, so we're going to go X and a zero. And this is an individual that has Turner's syndrome. Over here on this one, we've got three chromosomes right here. That's number 18. So notation on this person would be 47. We list the sex chromosomes. It's got an X. It's got a Y. So this one's a boy. And because we got a, a 47 here, we need to put the plus 18. So this one has trisomy 18. Trisomy means you got three. Looking over here at this individual, you've got three of the number 13, and you got two X chromosomes. So this individual would be 47 XX, so it's a girl, plus 13. Okay, now because this one up here didn't have a, it's a sex chromosome, I can see which one I'm missing. We didn't have to put minus Y or minus X, all right? So pay attention to this stuff down here. That is your directions on how to notate a karyotype. All right, second thing that we dealt with was pedigrees. Uh, pedigrees are going to show how a Mendelian trait is passed down through multiple generations within a family. Remember the squares are guys and the circles are the girls. Up here at the top, we've got a dominant uh, allele. So this is autosomal dominant, which means it's on one of the first 22 chromosomes. It's going to be inherited at the same rate in both males and females. And since it's dominant, you only need one allele. So anybody who is shaded completely in, or if they're a heterozygote, is going to show the trait. And as you can see here, in a dominant allele, lots of individuals in each generation is going to show it. Autosomal recessive traits, that trait is not going to show up as much because you need to have two copies. But because it's autosomal, that means it's going to be the same on both males and females. So colored in, they're going to show it. Half colored in, those are going to be your carriers. And as you can see here, only these two individuals actually have the trait. So examples of autosomal recessive traits are going to be albinism, cystic fibrosis, and phenylketonuria. All right, the A, B, and O blood types. Uh, this is one of the concepts that we've been struggling with. So we did this last menu. You need to start doing better with it here. All right, so let's, let's do a sample problem for you. All right, so let's say we've got an individual that is A, O, so it's type A, but it carries the O allele, and it has the positive uh, RH factor. So this one is A positive. And we're going to cross it with somebody who's going to be B 
negative. <clears throat> and the only way that you can be negative is you've got to have two alleles. And so even though we've got these symbols that aren't le uh, letters, you're still going to do the FOIL. So for independent assortment, the first, the outside one, the inside one, and the last of each pair. So that's going to be part of your Punnett square. Get my lines drawn in here for you. Typical for me, they are perfectly straight. Oh! <laughs> that's, that's almost, that's boarding on being a joke. All right. Close enough for government work. All right, so let's foil this one. You're either going to have a B minus or an O minus. So we can use a shortcut. We don't even need to use these over here. All right. From this point, you should be able to plug and chug. So we'll just do a couple of these. A, B, plus, plus, A, O, plus, minus, whoops, fix my plus in there, so on and so forth, all right? So from looking at this side, you should be able to create a phenotype and or a genotype ratio. So make sure that we start foiling these correctly. It's okay if they're not letters. They can just be simple symbols. All right, this was on page four of your notes, and this is the list of all of our autosomal disorders, okay? The top half are going to be autosomal recessive, and the bottom half are going to be mainly autosomal dominance, all right? You have this in your notes. I'm going to trust that you know how to read and go over that. All right, so let's look at cystic fibrosis. We had a quiz question where you guys missed it a lot. You missed it because you didn't pay attention to this area down here. This is a recessive allele. It's going to create a very thick mucus that's going to plug up your digestive system and your respiratory system. It's caused by a deletion of three bases. In other words, a single codon is deleted, and that causes the shape and this ion channel there in the middle. You'll find this one also on page four of your notes. Okay, sickle cell disease. Uh, this is an inherited disorder that you typically find in people of sub-Saharan African descent. Uh, the allele is the result of a point mutation which causes under a uh, low pH in your blood, the hemoglobin will change its shape and form a curve or a sickle shape. Right. This also shows codominance. The heterozygous individuals, some of their um, red blood cells are going to be of the sickle variety and the others are going to be normal. If you're heterozygous though, you don't show the disease, but you do have resistance to malaria because some of your red blood cells show the, the sickle shape to it. All right, so sickle cell disease, it has the heterozygous advantage, and we're going to talk about this again when we get to evolution. All right, sex-linked traits are traits that are found on a sex chromosome, and typically it's going to be the X chromosome because it's so much bigger than the Y chromosome. It has room to have genes that have nothing to do with being a male or a female. They're just genes that you as a human being would use. All right, one of the key features of a sex-linked trait is they're usually recessive and sex-linked recessive traits. They're going to be inherited more often by males because they only have one of the X chromosomes. So here's an example of a sex-linked trait. Red-green colorblindness. If you're red-green colorblind, you can't see the green 15 in this circle up here. And so this is X-linked recessive. Uh, it's going to show up in males more often. And as you look down here into this Punnett square, the only individual who's colored in, in other words, who has the red-green color blindness, is a male, but the females can be carriers. Males can never be carriers with an X-linked recessive trait. Hemophilia is another sex-linked uh, recessive trait. Uh, once again, mothers can be carriers. Uh, males are typically the one who show the trait. The only way a female can have the trait is they inherited an allele from their dad and one from their mom. And as you see here in this, this Punnett square, we have a female who's a carrier, we have a father who is normal, and as the boxes get uh, filled in here, you'll see that half of the females are carriers, and in this case, half of the boys are going to have the trait. So none of the girls would actually have hemophilia. Now hemophilia at one time was known as the royal disease because royals would often marry only royals, so the allele stayed in their gene pool, as you can see here, uh, these are the royal families in Europe from mainly the 1700s through the 1800s. And as you can see here, a big, big chunk of them had the hemophilia allele 
or they were carriers. Right. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is another example of this, X-linked recessive. And as you can see here on this pedigree, it's the males who show it, and the only carriers are going to be females. All right, X chromosome inactivation. You kind of need to treat this like it's codominant, but it truly isn't. It's because in females, one of the X chromosomes will be lionized and turned into a bar body. So as you can see over here, this is the bar body. This is the X chromosome that was wadded up into a ball and basically tossed over into the corner. So in cats, the orange allele is carried on the uh, X chromosome and the black allele. So in the males, they're either going to be orange or they're going to be black. But in the females, if they're homozygous for black, they're going to be a black cat, and if they're homozygous for the orange, they're going to be an orange cat. But due to the X chromosome inactivation, the females who are heterozygous, in other words, they carry the orange allele and the black allele, they're going to be calico because in some of their cells, the orange chromosome is lionized, so they're going to express the, the black trait. And in other cells, the black uh, uh, chromosome is lionized, and they're going to express the orange trait. Only calico kitties can be uh, females. All right, non-disjunction is when chromosomes do not separate correctly during meiosis, and it can also occur in not only an autosome, but it can occur in sex chromosomes. When it occurs in autosomes, you're going to get things like Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and Patel syndrome. All right? So, you know, Down syndrome being trisomy 21, you have an extra 21. Um, when it comes to non-disjunction with your sex chromosomes, you're either going to get uh, Turner syndrome, which is monosomy X, you're 45 XO, you only have one sex chromosome, or you're going to have Kleinfelters, in which you're 47 X, X, Y, you have an either an extra X or an extra Y. Now, that's going to end this video. Uh, kind of short and sweet for these kind of videos. Remember, don't forget to study your notes, look through your study guide, and if there's any particular topic as you're going through your study that you don't understand, go find that video in our playlist. So, until our next menu, I'm going to catch you on the flip side.